Effective communication is essential for a safe overlanding journey. Stay tuned and find out my top 10. Hello everybody and welcome back to Nomad Overland. My name is Ben and thank you for joining me here outdoors for this top 10 video. Let's get into number one, lack of cellular service. Now there are many, many, many remote areas well, where cellular service is simply not available to you. I was watching over the last uh, week a wonderful video by the team at Trail Recon and they were going up to the Arctic Ocean. An amazing trip. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll link it down in the description below for you to check it out. But they're out of cellular service. They don't have access to a cell system. So what did they do? Well, they were using they were using Starlink, the new system set up by Elon Musk, where they could connect uh, remotely uh, via a satellite uplink and still be able to communicate to people thousands of kilometers away. So, if you are in an area where you know for sure you are not going to have cellular service, this may be something that you want to definitely check out. Okay, number two, satellite cell phone malfunctions. Now, sat phones have been used over the last decade or more for people who are really going out into the middle of nowhere. However, satellite phones are great, but they can malfunction. So what you need to do is to get into Google and type in how to maintain your satellite phone. Okay, so this is a little research that you can do in order to maintain your technology. I'm not gonna go into details on that, but it is something that may be helpful for you. Number three, in terms of communication, language barriers. Now, I have lived in a non-English speaking world for nearly 20 years. And while I know some of the language to get around here in South Korea, certainly having some basics of the language will be certainly very, very helpful. The other thing that I would recommend, of course, are translators. And you can put those right on your phones um, and you can access those if you absolutely need to. Now, of course, what happens if you don't have cellular service? Well, you might want a paper backup. So think of some of the you know, top 20 phrases that you might need. Things like emergency phrases or where's the washroom or where can I get food? Those are all things that you might want to have written down on a piece of paper so that you can show a local and point to the question and they can guide you in the right direction. Number four, inconsistent internet access. Now, I did mention Starlink uh, just a little while ago and I wanted to uh, just give you a little heads up on that. I have a friend of mine up in uh, Alberta and she is doing trips in Alberta, uh, Northern British Columbia, etc. And she actually has Starlink set up on her RV. And she has been in some extremely remote areas and her Starlink is amazing. Uh, it's done a really, really good job for her to stay in touch with people uh, outside of the region. Now, is that going to be a system that you can afford or that you're thinking about but you're not sure? Um, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below so that you can check that out. Number five, radio communication issues. Now, there are of course a myriad of radio systems that you can use for communication. And those radios are going to uh, be determined by distance. So some of those radios that you're going to use are just very simple, you know, one to two kilometer range sort of radios. Others, you might have a CB where you can get into repeater stations, etc. You might have a ham radio system. Now, 
all of those things, all of those different radios have pluses and minuses, okay? So I'm not here to tell you which one you should use. However, I would suggest that you actually, if you're in a team, you should decide which systems you want to use as a team and stick with it. Number six, emergency beacon problems. Now, um, emergency beacons, these are uh, personal location devices, PLDs or PLBs, personal location beacons. These are really, really handy to have and you should have more than one in your team. Now, these can have reliability issues because they're going to be connected to a satellite network. What happens if the satellite system goes down or there's an error with your hand unit? This is where it may be very helpful to have another person in your team backed up with that sort of system. Number seven, misunderstandings due to accents or dialects. Now this is another language issue, which I already talked about, but even when you're speaking a similar language, you can find it difficult perhaps to be, to be understanding another individual when they are speaking English or some other language. And that's fine. It's, it's, that's perfectly normal. What you should be doing, first of all, be patient with yourself and with the people who you are interacting with. Language is not a universal thing. Accents and dialects are not universal. So please take care to simply respect the other person. If you don't understand, ask them to repeat again slowly because you don't understand. That's perfectly fine. It's no problem to do that. If that doesn't work, take out a pen and paper and have them write down the instructions for you so you, you can read in English or whatever language you happen to be uh, using uh, common between the two of you. Number eight, failure of navigation devices. Now, we are in a world where technology is ubiquitous, even when we're going outdoors. And there's nothing wrong with taking technology to guide you in the right direction. However, GPS can fail. And it's always important to have backups, which means you should know how to use paper maps and compasses wherever you are and have paper maps for wherever you are going. The, the maps that you will want to have are going to be topographical in nature rather than a simple road map so that you can determine the elevations that are going to be around you. Okay, so that is something that even though you might not use it, backups are essential. So sure, you might wanna have Onyx X on your tablet in your car. You might wanna have iOverlander on your phone just in case Onyx goes down. And if that goes down as well, paper maps, they're not going to break on you. So always have those available for your journeys. Number nine, cultural miscommunications. Wow. Um, now, this is even more than just language barriers because things that you do on a normal basis could have negative repercussions depending on the location you are in. For example, what does this mean in North America? It means okay. It means everything's fine, right? Well, if you do this in Brazil, you're basically telling somebody to do this right? So obviously you want to make sure that you are aware of the cultural idiosyncrasies of the areas that you're going. And every country is going to have different ones. So read up on those cultural things. Make a list for yourself. Have them in a notebook. Do something so that you can be aware of what those are and not to offend the people around you. Here we go, number 10. Lack of pre-trip communication planning. Ooh, yes, this is a big one. Planning out any trip that's going to be multi-day is of course something where you're going to have to have a little bit or a lot 
of planning depending on where you're going. And having a communication strategy is key to that overall trip. Making sure that people who are not in your trip are included in the planning of your trip is essential for communication throughout a longer trip. Now, I'm not talking about one or two days, although that might be something you want to do. But let's say you're going on a one-week journey, a two-week journey, a four-week journey. You're doing the Pan American Highway and it's going to take six months. This is all trips that you should be spending time and effort planning your communication.